Alrighty guys, so the uh, purpose of this video is to just introduce you to um, what the Spring Framework is and what a really a controller is and, and how it does its magic. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I've loaded up my Spring, uh, Spring Tool Suite here, uh, my handy dandy IDE. And if you don't have this one, then you're probably going to need to download it. And you can get it from, I think it's springsource.org. Uh, might even be slash downloads or something like that, but anyway, you can you can find uh, Spring uh, Source Tool Suite anywhere on Google, and it'll point you in the right direction. So once you've downloaded it and installed it, um, what I do here is I just right click in my Package Explorer. Uh, I'm in the uh, Spring view. I believe you can also be in the in the Java view. I think that's one of them. Uh, Java EE or Java views will also suffice. But I'm in the Spring view. And um, what you can do is I just right click in my Package Explorer. I say New. And I create a Spring template project. So this is the easiest way to get off the ground with the Spring uh, framework. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, templates that you can choose from, but I usually just use a uh, Spring MVC project, Model View Controller, which if you're uh, landing on this video from my podcast episode 33, then uh, you've learned a lot already about the Model View Controller and what MVC stands for. And uh, so you can go ahead and click uh, Next. And what you need to do is create your project name. So the project name is the name that will be appearing uh, on the left here inside of your package explorer. Uh, so I'm just going to call this, uh, I don't know, test spring project. And it also asks you to specify the top level package name. So uh, for example, com.mycompany.myapplication. Um, so really, this is just your your sort of the website that you're going to be deploying your application on. Usually, you use the website name sort of backwards. So instead of mycompany.com, you use com.mycompany. So mine is com.howtoprogramwithjava, because I have the howtoprogramwithjava.com blog. And now you name your application. So um, this name is significant that you're about to type in here, because that's how you will access it from your browser. Um, so let me call this, uh, let me just call it spring, um, I can, let me just call it spring. That, that's a uh, fair enough, uh, you know, simple enough name to give it. So let me call it spring and I will say finish. Now it does some, uh, some magic and down here you'll see it says it does some building of workspace. Uh, I've done it once already so it's a little bit quicker, yours might be a little bit slower. And you might even see over here um, in the package explorer you might see some errors or something like that. If you do see errors just try to go to project and say clean. So long as your build automatically is checked you say clean. And then you can say ok to clean your project and it will just rebuild everything and hopefully your errors will go away. Now, as you can see here, it uh, creates a whole bunch of things inside of its structure. Uh, namely, the uh, important ones, you can expand the source, main, web app, web inf, and views folder, and you'll see a home.jsp file. So if you're familiar with JSPs, then that's great. If you're not, then this is essentially just an HTML page with HTML code, but it has some uh, special syntax at the top, and you can put in this special syntax all over that sort of allows you to... I suppose infuse it with some Java code, which is kind of neat. Um, so uh, another thing that's important to look at is the controllers, because as I was saying, this is all about controllers. So you see, it creates inside of the com dot how to program a Java dot spring package. It creates a home controller dot Java file, and I'll be going over this file and talking about how it works in just a second. But first, I want to actually deploy this application. So if you've never deployed an application before, um, you need to have sort of a, a web-enabled project, which this one will be because we've created a Spring template project. But in the uh, Spring tool suite, you can click on it and drag it down into the servers window, and you'll see when you let go, it will actually deploy the project. So that's kind of cool. And then in here, in your server, you can actually click on the actual name of the server. So for me, it's the VMware vFabric TC server, uh, developer edition. You might also have something like a Tomcat server. Um, you can have, I don't know, Glassfish. And there's a whole bunch of different sort of web uh, servers that you can use. But this one comes sort of default and loaded into uh, the Spring uh, Tool Suite uh, IDE. So you can click on it, and you can click on the Start the Server button. And hopefully, if all goes well over here in your console, you'll be able to have it start up and say that it started up in X number of milliseconds without any sort of errors. So you see these are all info, there's some warnings, but there's no errors and there's no big stack trace errors. So it looks like it started up correctly. 
So the next thing you're going to want to do is fire up your favorite web browser. Mine is the uh, you know Google Chrome. And what's going to happen is you want to match up, uh, you probably will see a port or something like, like 8080 um, or something along the lines of uh, something starting with an 80 followed by something or other. So for me, it's 8080 is the port that this particular uh, server is actually has actually started up in so that's the port that I want to access when I type in localhost so I can type in localhost colon 8080 and that will load up um, on my local machine at port 8080 it should uh, try to send a request and see if something is functioning so if I go there you see that it has this VMware TC Server Developer Edition um, sort of basic screen that shows up. So if you did it correctly, if your server started correctly, then this is sort of what you'll see um, when you access localhost 8080. But this is not the application that I have sort of built really quickly based on the Spring template uh, framework. Um, I've actually built a web application deployed within my server. So if I go a little bit further inside of my server, I should be able to see this project. So I can type in forward slash and then type in, I believe I named it Spring. So remember when I said that uh, the name of the project, when you're naming it uh, by the package, uh, like this over here, I named it com dot how to program Java dot Spring. It actually used this particular um, wording here, and it, it's been it's using it for the deployment of the application. So when I go and say and I hit enter, if all goes well, there we go. It has loaded up this hello world uh, page, and this is actually the home.jsp page that was uh, created inside of this views directory. And it is doing this because of controllers, this controller magic. So even though I've gone to slash spring and I haven't typed in anything like home.jsp or home.html or anything like that, I just typed in slash spring and it has actually opened up the home.jsp file. So how did it do that? Well, I'll explain. It does that based on the home controller. So the controller here, first uh, and foremost, it can be named whatever you like. Um, you don't have to name it as controller, but that's kind of the convention. It's nice to name it uh, with a the, the word controller at the end so you know what you're dealing with. But the most important part is that it has an at controller annotation above the class name. So this is very important. This is what Spring uses to, uh, to sort of mark this particular um, class uh, as a controller. So if I didn't have this here, if I deleted this controller and saved it, um, I, I've changed my Java file, so now my server will have to reboot. Um, this is something that's kind of annoying, but it, it's just uh, the name of the game when you're dealing with uh, um, uh, what you call it, uh, web applications. So it reloads the controller, or it reloads the uh, the application. And if I go back and reload this page, you'll see that now we get a 404 error. It doesn't know what you want. There's no mapping happening anymore because we've deleted that at annotation, uh, at controller annotation from our code. So if I put that back in and, and resave this file and it will reload the reload my server, then you'll see that everything goes back to normal. So I just wanted to show you that this at controller annotation is very important when you're creating controllers. Um, the second uh, second thing you see here is a logger. This is not exactly that uh, critical to use. Um, it's just putting some uh, info out on the console um, for the, the logging information. It just says welcome home um, and it uses something called a locale. Um, but you know what, that's not very important. Let me let me remove that for now because we're not, uh, we don't want to over clutter our, um, our particular, you know, uh, example here. And what it's doing is it's, it's getting a date format. Um, so let me, uh, let me see if I can use, let me, let me just dumb it down. Let me create a, a simple date uh, formatter and say format equals new simple date format. And uh, let me just say, let me see, um, month, month. Uh, I think I need to say month, month with capitals. Uh, day, day, year, year. And uh, good enough. Let me just do that. And let me say format dot format. There we go. Um, so yeah, just just trying to simple make things a little bit more simple. So all it's going to do is it's going to create a date, and um, it's going to format it here based on this month day year format, and uh, it's going to format that date, and it's going to put that on the model. 
okay? So, things that are important to note here. There's another at request uh, mapping annotation here. So this is another annotation. Um, and I actually didn't talk about this one in my podcast because it's kind of tough to, to visualize it. But now that I have this uh, you know, screen in front of you, I can talk about it. This is what we use to actually map a URL to a particular method. So if you see here, it says just forward slash. There's nothing uh, in front of it or behind it. It's just a forward slash. So that's why when we went to uh, just spring with a forward slash, that is why we get mapped to this particular, um, what's this called, method. Okay, that's why we got mapped to this method. If it wasn't for this forward slash, we would not have gone to the home method and executed all of this uh, information or, or code here um, if it wasn't for this forward slash. So let me go back now and refresh this page. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working because I need to restart my server. So I'm going to click on restart the server down here and let it do its thing. There we go. And then I'm going to go back and refresh my page. And there you go. So now you see the date uh, has been formatted differently. So now it's month, day, and year. Um, I'm recording this video on August 14th of 2013. Um, so fantastic. That's great. So now let me change this up a bit. Let me show you what I mean by these request mappings. Um, you can change this value to say something like, um, I don't know, slash login. Let's say that that's what I want it to be. And I'll restart my server forcefully so I don't have to wait for it. Um, so I've changed it to say slash login. So what do you think is going to happen now? Do you think that if I go here and refresh this page that it's going to work properly? Or do you think it's going to not work properly? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's refresh the page. Well, look at that. It does not work properly. So why is that? Well, it's because we've changed this value in here to say that I'm looking for all URLs that start with, or that are, sorry, not start with, that are exactly forward slash and log in. And of course, this is already nested inside of the slash spring application. So our application is called spring, and then we're looking at something, a URL within spring. Okay, so if, since I refresh and nothing is showing up, that means that we haven't mapped anything to sort of the root uh, spring application. Instead, I've mapped it to login, right? Because I have a slash login right here. So what do you think is going to happen when I hit the enter key? Let's find out. We go to the hello world. So you see how this URL matches this URL here, which is part of the at request mapping annotation. Now, I also mentioned in my podcast episode 33, um, which if you want, if, if you don't, if you haven't listened to that podcast episode, I would suggest you do that um, to put this uh, video into context. You can go to how to program with java.com forward slash session 33, and you'll hear all about uh, this uh, request method stuff that I was talking about, the get versus the post. All right. So fantastic. The other thing going on here is this magic right here. You see that it says return home, okay? It, it's returning a string. And the home represents the home.jsp file, okay? If I were to change this to say, I don't know, uh, login for, for instance, everything again would break because now it's going to be looking for a login.jsp file. And you see here in my views directory, I don't have a login.jsp, I only have a home.jsp. Okay, so my server just restarted. So if I go back and say refresh, we're back to saying status 404. But now you see it's looking for spring slash webinf slash view slash login.jsp. It's looking for login.jsp because we've put the word login here. Okay, and uh, and, and this, is, um, this is a very typical uh, situation, a very common thing that, that we do uh, when we create these methods. We create a public string method, so it returns a string, and this is the name of the view that we want to return. Okay, so let me put that back to home because it's going to uh, line up with our home.jsp file that we've created. All right, so my server restarted, now I can refresh, and there you go, everything's back to normal. Now, one last thing that I want to mention before I sign off is this right here. So we have model.add attribute. Again, if you remember uh, back in my podcast episode, I was talking about model in terms of model view and controller. Okay, um, Model is the data. Okay, Model is, uh, is what we use to 
uh, in our views to pull from and to sort of you know mold our view to, to shape it in, in one way, shape, or form um, to display some interesting data. For this one, uh, you can think of a model kind of like a map, okay? Because that's essentially, I believe, what it is down down its hierarchy line. Is it some sort of a map? Um, you can see here it allows for accessing the overall model as a map. All right. So think of it as a map, and maps have keys and values. So this particular key here is a string, and we're saying server time. That's the key that we're storing on the model. What's the value that goes along with server time is the formatted date, okay? And all we're doing here is creating a new date based on today's date. And let's do something else. Let's say hour, minute, uh, second. So let's, let's get a little bit date and time in there as well. So we're formatting that date based on month, day, year, hour, minute, second. And we're then putting that date on the model. So then inside of our view, which is our home.jsp file right here, this is our view. Inside of there, we can then access this data that was passed from the JSP or from the Java code. All right, so this is how we are able to talk between Java and HTML, uh, or more specifically, Java and JSPs. You see here we have this special sort of syntax for this server time key. Remember, this was the key that we used to store our information, our date, on the model. We use this dollar sign, open curly bracket, and clo close curly bracket um, a syntax to refer to any uh, data that's stored on the model. Again, server time here, if you go over here, server time. There's, that's not a coincidence, that is exactly done that way because we've called it server time here on the Java side. Okay, So you see here it says the time on the server is server time. So it's just referring to the variable that's stored on the model. All right, so now let's go back and let's refresh, and you'll see this will change to include the time. So you see here that I'm recording at 10.05 uh, and 57 seconds, and, and you don't know, is that 10.05 a.m. or p.m.? Well, you can go back, and you can add the letter A into our format, and that will tell you if it's a.m. or p.m. All right, so this is all, uh, this goes beyond the scope of, uh, of the spring talk. This is all simple date formatting stuff that you can, uh, you can look that up on uh, on the Google, if you wish, on the internet, and it'll explain all of this, uh, you know, wording and syntax for you. But we can go back and refresh the page, and now you see that it is indeed 10:06 p.m. is when I'm recording this video. So there you go. This is uh, this is I've shown you how to get variables passed from Java to your JSP. How you refer to it by using this syntax, this special syntax. Um, how you add attributes to our model. Okay, it's just like a uh, a map. You can add any any sort of um, variable or any sort of data into the model that you wish, as long as you specify the the key as well as the value. And uh, I've shown you how you can map a URL to a particular method using a controller. All right. So there you go. Quick little video to explain a little bit and put a little bit of that uh, model view controller stuff and spring stuff into um, into view. It, it brings it all together and, and shows you exactly what it is that I'm talking about. All right, guys? So hopefully that was a lot of, uh, a lot of help and it opened up uh, your eyes and, and you can see how uh, more or less how easy it is to, to create a, uh, a spring-ready application using that spring template framework stuff in the spring IDE. All right? So, as always, take care of yourselves, happy learning, and bye for now.